events um, in the past and what the program's events are for 2013. So take away, Charlie. Great, thanks. Uh, so I was keeping quiet as people were brainstorming, but I'll try to respond to as many of those questions that you brought up. Uh, and if I don't answer them, just feel free to bring them up because we won't have time. So uh, what I wanted to kind of give you an overview of uh, was uh, the results from uh, 2012 in terms of programs. Uh, we ended the year uh, with just over 350 events, <coughs> and many of these are repeating events on some of them. Um, and uh, as uh, Jesse noted, uh, most events are done uh, by uh, third parties working with us. It could be a nonprofit organization, it could be a neighborhood association could be a donor of services like an exercise class. But um, it's, it's the kind of the wide variety that makes it really successful because it's essentially for programs and events, uh, it's myself uh, plus two others and we have a number of other duties including public art, communications, website, that sort of thing. So, um, but we, we love working with uh, groups uh, across the city and we had some really kind of unique experiences in the last year uh, that really kind of tested our our ability to put them on. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of what the usage patterns are, uh, we track four factors uh, in uh, annually, and we're pretty religious about doing it. We track uh, food vendor patrons, uh, Wi-Fi logons, wi uh, logons for Wi-Fi system, carousel paid riders, and then events attendance. Uh, so yes, we spend a lot of time going like that at crowds and estimating how many people fit into a parcel, that sort of thing. You can see that we saw a fairly sizable jump. A lot of that was uh, uh, event attendance as well as uh, food vendor patrons. Uh, Wi-Fi grew a little bit. Carousel was down. We had a few more rainy weekends, uh, and then our carousel vendor had to pull the carousel a few weeks early when we had that little hurricane blow through. He told me Saturday night, he said, I'm coming tomorrow to get the carousel. Um, so we had to pull that a few weeks early. Uh, but uh, about 600,000 plus patrons, and again, these are the folks that can count versus the millions of people we know that cross the Greenway on, on an annual basis. Um, the other thing we did was we looked at, uh, we tried to do a survey every year, and we tried to gauge uh, support or responses for people from the things that we do provide, that's sort of from food to events. Uh, and everything in between. Uh, our responses were a little lower this year. It wasn't for lack of asking or trying, but uh, it, it was fairly similar to uh, previous years. So I want to kind of walk you through that. And again, this informs what we do or the types of events that we look for partners in, in kind of bringing forward. Uh, so we'll just kind of walk you through a, a couple of things. Um, uh, these are three charts that kind of give you some demographic information. Um, you know, how often do people visit? It's split uh, pretty evenly between um, monthly, uh, daily and weekly. Uh, monthly is a little less. Once a year is 1%. Uh, age range is pretty well distributed. And these are pretty consistent with last year. And then live and work locales, we actually shifted it a little bit. We asked if you live and work nearby, or you, uh, you're a Metro Boston or don't uh, live or work nearby, or beyond Metro Boston. But about 70% live or work nearby, as, as would, you would expect. Uh, we also asked about our food vendors. This is the first time we did this. Uh, we're now in the fourth year of our food vending program. We just started last week. Uh, today was the first really nice day, so they were out there in droves. But we looked at two things. We looked at an overall favorable rating, and then we looked at also if you knew or didn't know about the vendor. And I think the, uh, the good news is uh, a lot of our vendors get very favorable ratings, but um, there's a lot of potential for more business for the food vendors, which is, which is great for them. Um, we had several food vendors. Uh, we have not returning in yellow versus returning in green. We had several uh, vendors uh, not reapply. Um, uh, several very popular ones, which I just want to mention. Uh, one is Eagle Exchange. They did a cart. They have a store. They decided to focus on the store. Uh, Silk Road Barbecue was another one who decided not to apply back to our food program. So I just want to mention um, and then in terms of uh, general interest of, of type of event, uh, the things that we seem to get uh, most consistently interested in is uh, historically movies. Uh, that's been a little less this year, but temporary art displays is number one, concerts is number two, horticultural events for adults is number three, and educational programs for children and teens is number four. And we try to uh, balance what we do, especially in terms of our staff time, and focusing on those areas. As an example, we're going to be doing three uh, focused concert credit tours, working with our work staff in May, 
June and uh, September this year as one example. Concerts we mentioned, uh, the Berkeley Performance Series, we did eight concerts, we are planning for 12 this year. Uh, Berkeley is a great um, partner to work with. They charge very little money. Uh, they have a kind of a turnkey operation and they have lots of students that want to play music outdoors in front of an audience, uh, which is great. Um, and I, I think Cajun Funk Zydeco was probably the most unique one that we had uh, this past year. So. Uh, we also asked for some open-ended questions. We, uh, we wanted to get um, you know, input. Uh, it was, uh, I think the year, last year uh, we had a lot more about uh, Occupy, obviously Occupy colored a lot of our stuff last year. This year it was a lot, it ranged from more trees to, uh, you know, allow bikes to discounted parking, to sell your fertilizer, mulch, and greenway event, that sort of thing. But it's always good to see what people ask for. We also asked if there's a specific location where you'd like a food truck park or not. Uh, Dewey was uh, the, the big winner of followed by Rosemont Plaza. But the, the response to open any questions is fairly low. So what I want to talk about uh, next is just the, the uh, kind of anticipated programs. So a little bit about our programs. Um, again, we work with partners. We love recurring events. Two of our most popular programs are the Farmers Market that we work with, the Boston Public Market Association. That'll start Thursday before Memorial Day and it will run through the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, the other one is the Greenway Open Market, which is done by Chris Massey, who runs the SOA Market. Um, and that'll start uh, Memorial Day weekend and run through Halloween. And those are, are two consistent uh, events that draw you know, thousands of people each, each week. Um, a couple things about um, how we permit events. It's a little complicated. Um, but uh, just to give you an idea, people submit an application to us if it's just an event that takes place on uh, parkland, uh, we refer it over to the City of Boston Parks and Recreation Department. And they usually, hopefully within a few days of the event, actually issue a permit, so they're the permitting agency. For any event that draws more than 500 people, we are referred to the Mayor's Office of Special Events. And that means we have to fill out a longer permit form, and we have to take a trip down to the Boston Police Department on a Tuesday, I was there today, uh, to uh, meet with um, essentially representatives from all the city departments, fire, police, EMS, transportation, MBTA, you name it. And they can basically ask for anything they want uh, that's either required, required by permit or not. I learned a new term today when we were actually going and permitting a, a, uh, an event, and it was called a public safety engineer, was a new one that was, we were asked for today. Uh, it was interesting, I hadn't heard that before. That's a person that uh, allows you to specify how many people can be in a tent. Um, that was different from the, from the fire department, so it's kind of interesting. But um, uh, we do have a, a range of events. Um, uh, a couple of new ones I want to point out. Uh, in April, in about two weeks, we're doing a collaborative event with four other parks organizations called 5% for Earth Day. This is an idea I stole from Austin, Texas, where I used to live. And uh, it was done by a number of parks groups there. We've actually recruited uh, about 42 retailers that have agreed to uh, donate 5% of the proceeds on birthday, which is Monday, April 22nd, and we'll divide that amongst the groups. Um, <laughs> that includes us, the Esplanade Association, the Friends of Public Gardens, um, the Emerald Necklace Conservancy, and the Charles River Conservancy. So we're real excited about that. It's been a lot of fun going out and doing cold calls and, and kind of getting together and, and kind of making that work. So we're hoping to raise some funds for that. Um, in Austin, that's in its fourth year. Last year, they had, uh, I believe it was 162 retailers, and they raised $63,000. So it can grow over time. They started the first year with about, uh, it was a little less than $10,000. Another uh, thing that we are working on uh, that we've had a few drop-offs for, we do get a number of fitness classes donated. Uh, we have the Lang Hotel donated two fitness classes. Uh, we've had different spas uh, and different groups uh, donate everything from Tai Chi to various types of yoga. They're very popular. People really love them. We're still looking for some of those. Um, but um, so far, we are looking at about 170 events that we're currently in the process of working with the city and the state to permit so far. And now that the snow is almost gone, he says, speaking hopefully, um, we'll get a lot more calls about that. But um, 
Uh, probably our two biggest weekends this summer are going to be the last weekend in July. We have a participatory arts festival called Figment, which started in New York, and it, it usually includes between 80 and 100 acts. It's all volunteer, uh, and they do a two-day celebration. Um, they are heavily influenced by technology and the fact that most of the organizers go and spend a week at Burning Man in Nevada uh, right after our event. Um, but we're looking at combining that with a number of other uh, arts festivals that are going on. Um, the, uh, the Boston Globe Arts Festival has been one that's expressed an interest in expanding. Uh, and then uh, uh, the new uh, festival uh, that's uh, occurring on the common has also been interested. Uh, the other <clears throat> big weekend will obviously be the weekend we open the carousel, which will be Labor Day weekend. Uh, and we have been working uh, with uh, a group called Summer on the Waterfront, which has uh, been driven by the Boston Harbor Association. Uh, Julie Rupser is their executive director. Vivian Lee is the, uh, the founder and chair of that organization. And they've pulled together a number of for-profit and non-profit groups to basically market and advertise the activities they have that we have going on all summer along the waterfront. Uh, last year, we did it with very little money. Uh, we had a couple of, of specific events. Uh, this year, uh, Julie has um, put together uh, a great coalition, and uh, they are hoping to have something big on Labor Day weekend that I can't necessarily talk about yet, but hopefully they'll be talking about it soon. But that'll be in addition to our carousel opening, as well as the arts festival going on at Bristol uh, Council. So those are two great weekends. And then we'll have all our markets. Um, what we do for uh, activities on weekdays and weekends is we have our activity cards, we have the long games, we do those on noon time uh, uh, during the weekday, and we do them uh, on weekends near some of our big events. Uh, we mentioned the Imagination Playground, it's a bunch of giant blue foam uh, blue blocks. I'll have it actually out at the North End Park during uh, the Flower Festival this weekend. It's, it's a kid magnet. It's absolutely amazing. I've used it in Austin too. It, we instantly have like 35 kids playing with it and hopefully not hitting each other with it. Um, and uh, our events continue on into the fall. Um, <clears throat> we had really good success with uh, two events in October um, that were a week apart, uh, which tested ours severely. Uh, one was called the Mobile Food Festival, which was organized by some food trucks uh, or, or owners and organizers. We're going to have that return two times this year. The first one is going to be on May 4th in the Wharf District. We're going to have 18 food trucks, nine from New York and nine from Boston. Um, last year, in a 12-hour period of time, the 16 food trucks at that event sold a total of 32,000 items in a 12-hour period of time. It was insane. Uh, we did it at Dewey Square. That lower picture is actually a view from uh, my, one of my folks' uh, uh, husband's uh, windows. Um, the other one we did was the Boston Local Food Festival, which attracted about 35,000 people, and that's done by a, an organization called the Sustainable Business Network of Massachusetts. They are <clears throat> continuing to look for uh, funding and donors that are hoping to put it on again this year. Um, and looking at the future, especially with the opening of the carousel, um, we're hoping for you know some uh, coordinating events with when the Friends of Christian Columbus uh, turn on their lights up purple, that would be a great example. Or when a Fanual Marketplace opens their annual blank uh, light festival. We're, we're, we're open to possibilities and opportunities. We, especially in the winter, it's hard to get people out and um, really kind of looking uh, for more than a few minutes at your park, especially when it's cold. So we're looking for ways in which to string events together and kind of bring people out. Um, so, take a quick water here. Um, I feel like uh, the gentleman who was doing the response to the Congress. Uh, but uh, just a little bit about hosting an event on the Greenway. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's a little bit of a complex process, but the way it starts is uh, we welcome uh, folks uh, coming to us and, and presenting an idea. And we can meet out on parks, we can uh, talk about pros and cons of doing an event on one park versus another, um, and we'll help you through uh, permit process. A lot of folks will just send us an application and we'll look it over. We'll have a quick conversation, maybe via email or phone, and we'll look before that to the City Parks Department. And again, if it's a more complex uh, event, uh, this is the Boston Local Food Festival. This is on uh, Parcel 16 between Milk and India. Uh, it, 
you just would require more hand holding and more uh, assistance from the city. The city may require you to do more things, um, working with the fire department, working with EMS, working with police, uh, working on a trash plan, that sort of thing. So it's, we really try to work with folks on a case by case basis. Um, and uh, you know, really what the city is concerned about and what they focus on is public safety. And it's making sure that everybody's gonna be safe, everybody's gonna have a good time, and you're gonna be able to get out there and enjoy it. Um, we're also piloting um, a way to try to um, rationalize our fees. We went back and looked at uh, our park use guidelines, which is a document that we have approved with MassDOT. It's about 20 pages long. And we've looked at ways in which we can especially make it easy for some of the smaller groups, like neighborhood groups, uh, to get uh, projects uh, approved and permitted, uh, and also try to rationalize uh, fees that our food truck vendors pay or our markets pay. Uh, we're looking at different uh, nonprofit versus for profit rates. Or when we have to do extra things, like extra trash pickup, we have to provide extra power, we have to do extra handling.